Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Good morning, Calvary. So good to be with you today. For those who don't know me, I'm, my name is Cornelius Murphy. I'm director of the care ministry and also connections here. And I have the privilege of sharing with you today. And when Pastor Ryan approached me about a, about a week and a half or so ago and just asked me to share, I really felt God laying on my heart to just to remind the church of God's word. And I, I read a book this past year by an author. His name is Jerry Bridges. And the title of the book is Grow Your Faith. And Jerry made an a interesting comment in this book that resonated with me, and I hope it resonated with, with you as well. But he made this statement. He said, Christians, we really don't need a new revelation. We simply need to be reminded of God's word. And I thought about that for a second, and I said, you know, there's a lot of truth in that. And that's the objective today, is not to give a new revelation, but to encourage us to act on the revelation that God has given us to, to us in his word. It's a reminder, today is a reminder. You hear me say that several times today. Because as, as human beings, we're very forgetful. We are. By God's grace, sometimes he'll bring us through a terrible time. He may even heal us of, of a sickness or something. And two months later, we'll go through something else, something very difficult. And you know what? We'll forget what God has done for us just two months ago. So there is a need for a reminder in our, our life because we just get so, so busy. And I want to jump right into this. We're going to cover a lot of territory today, but you hang with me. And, but we're going to start out in 2 Peter. And that's where we're going to get the majority of our text. That's the setting of what we're going to be talking about today. And it's going to come out of the first chapter of 2 Peter and we're going to go from verses 3 down to 15. And I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version today. And it goes this way. It says, His divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory and excellence, by which he has granted to us precious and very great promises so that through them you may become partakers of the divine nature, having escaped from the corruption that is in the world because of sinful desire. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and with virtue, knowledge, and knowledge, self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, and steadfastness with godliness, godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they keep you from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For whoever lacks these qualities is so nearsighted that he is blind, having forgotten that he was cleansed from his former sins. Therefore, brothers, be all the more diligent to confirm your calling and election. For if you practice these qualities, you will never fall. For in this way, there will be richly provided for you an entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this, this is the reminder that Paul talks about. He says, therefore, I intend always to remind you of these qualities, though you know them 
and are established in the truth that you have. I think it right as long as I am in this body to stir you up by way of reminder, since I know that the putting off of my body will be soon, as our Lord Jesus Christ made clear to me. And I will make every effort so that after my departure, you may be able at any time to recall these things. So in this passage, we find Peter reminding the church and he tells them that, I know you already know these things, but I want to remind you about them. And the reason why he's doing that, because they're, they're important. And this phase of Peter's life, he's winding down in his life. He even mentions that, I feel like the Lord is going to call me pretty soon, but I want to remind you of these things. And he even goes as far to say that I'm going to make sure that even after I'm gone, I'm going to put some things in place so you will still be reminded of them. And that's us today. We'll be reminding, we're being reminded of the things that Peter had told the church today. So he was effective in that. As we look at these passages, as we look at how Peter had listed all these things, there's some positives, some takeaways for us for adding these qualities to our faith. We find that they will keep us from being ineffective or unfruitful in the knowledge. And when we talk about knowledge here, we're talking about ex experience. So it keeps us from being from unfruitful in the knowledge or the experience of our Lord Jesus Christ. And, you know, as, as children of God, there's nothing more than we want than to please God. We want to fellowship with him. We enjoy spending that time. In fact, in the verse that we read previously, Peter said he gave us everything that we needed, that we might partake in his divine nature. And when he talks about that, nat that divine nature, he's talking about the very essence of who God is. So when we're spending time with God, we're, we're spending time in his presence, in the very essence of who God is. That's what we long for. When we give our hearts to God, we want to be in fellowship with him. And so Peter's saying when we do this, when we practice these qualities, we are participating. We, are, we, are being, we won't be ineffective. We won't be unfruitful in that. That's a positive but he also gives us a warning about it as well. He points out that if these qualities are missing or if we're lacking these things, we become blind and even short-sighted to the point that we can't see. He says that we can even forget that we were cleansed from our sins. And I, I thought about that for a second. I was like, you know, sometimes if, we, if we're wondering what's going on in our walk with the Lord, why am I not feeling so close to God? Look at some of these qualities and see if we're adding these into our, our life. Church, I know we know these things. I do. But this is a reminder. Let me remind you to add to your faith virtue. And when we say virtue, we're talking about goodness. And to our virtue, I want to remind us to add knowledge or the experience of God. Because sometimes we have to actually go through things to actually know what God is, is doing in our life. To add to our knowledge self-control or, or, or restraint, self-restraint. To your self-control, steadfastness. And, and that word steadfastness means Endurance, that means the ability to stand underneath something, to go through something. God gives us the ability to do that. We can go through things. And to our steadfastness, add godliness. And that's piety, a reverence of God, of, of who God is. God is holy. Add to our godliness, brotherly affection. And that word brotherly affection here means a love toward believers, love towards the family of God. 
and to add to our brotherly affection, love. And here, this love is agape love. This is a kind of love God has towards us. It's a love that seeks the good will of others. It's a benevolent kind of love. If we add these qualities to our faith, and not only add to them, Peter says, to increase in them. So we'll be doing this, we'll be doing this forever. There's, we don't retire as Christians until Jesus retires us, takes us home, or he comes back. We will, we will forever be adding these virtues into our life. And they will keep us, they will make us effective for God. And he said, if we, if we practice these things, they will keep us from falling. If we look closer at these qualities that Peter's talking about, we actually see a, a, a maturation or a growth process that's, that's happening. Because in the beginning, it's more internal. It's more of adding things to ourselves. It's more of the virtuous, it's goodness, adding goodness to ourselves. It starts that way and, and adding experience or adding knowledge of God. It's more eternal. But then it actually starts moving more towards an outward. It moves more towards a brotherly affection, a love for the church. It, it moves more outward. It moves more towards agape, a, a, a love towards others, a, the kind of love God has. There's a, there's a maturation process that's happening as we are adding to our faith. And again, we know this. We know this, church. However, I, I want to remind us of it because if we, if we just know something, it doesn't really benefit, benefit us just to know something. It, it really doesn't. Uh, James put it this way. This is James chapter 1, verse 25. It says, but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. So it's not the, it's, it's the doers of the word, should I say. It's the doers of the word, not just the hearers that are blessed. And, and that's true for us. It's good to know about God and what pleases God but the blessing comes out of actually doing it, applying it to our lives. And I want to make this point because just to kind of have an illustration for you today, because there's a lot of good things that we know we, sh we should be doing, right? I would just say exercise. Exercise is a, a great thing to do. It allows your body to carry oxygen. It strength strengthens your muscular system, which keeps your your skeletal system in place, all that good stuff. But do we do it? Or if you're like me, if you're good for three months, you're off three months, you know. It's good. What about a balanced diet? Our doctors are always reminding us of that one. So we know what we're supposed to eat, and we know what we're not supposed to eat. Do we do it? And what about this one? What about reading our Bibles and spending time with God? We know that's good for us. Do we do it? I'll let you answer, answer that one. And this is, this is not a condemnation. This, this is not the purpose of this message today. Because Romans 8, 1 says, there's, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus this is not about that. The goal today really is the same goal that Peter had when he spoke to the church a long time ago. It was encouraging good works in the believers. So the goal today is to encourage the church for good works. We are a disciple making church here at Calvary and Pastor Ryan has been great to keep us on our message here because that's, that's who we are as a body of Christ. But the only way that we are going to be a disciple-making church is by adding 
to our faith. In order for us to bear fruit, we're going to have to add to our faith. And, and we see that in John 15, verse 16, where Jesus says this. He says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appoint you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. So for an application and thought about this, think about it this way. We'll never go across the street and build a relationship with our neighbor if we're not adding to our faith. Or we'll never have a conversation, we'll never sit down with our coworker and have a conversation and be concerned about what, what's actually going on in their life and even pray for them if we're not adding to our, our faith. Because if, if we're not careful, the simple cares of life and just the ordinary things of, of, of what we do, they'll creep in and they'll keep, keep that from happening. It will. So today is, this is a reminder to add to our faith. And to help us with that, I, I have four practices, things that we need to practice to help us to keep our eye on Christ in 2021. I was thinking that 2020, we were so excited for it. And like, Lord, you're going to give us clear vision. 2020, we're, we're going to be, we're going to be like this with you, Lord. And I think he showed us. I think he showed us that, yeah, you need more of us. You need more. We need more of Christ. As a church, we need more of God. I think that's what he, he, he showed us. So I want to go over four things for us to practice this year. And, and they're not new things. This, there's no new revelation here. These things that we already know, these are reminders for us. And this list is not extensive because each one of these topics could have a whole sermon series by themselves. But the purpose for today is a, a reminder because we want to add to our faith. We want to add to our faith. And by practicing these things, I believe those, that will happen. And the first thing is, is to pray. And praying is simply talking to God. Sometimes people get really anxious about praying, especially when they, they're praying in public or praying with other people. They get nervous about it. Praying is, is just talking to God. It really is. And when we're talking to God, we're, we're building our relationship with him. And you know, God is our greatest accountability partner. We don't ever have to wonder. God, we never have to wonder what God is um, God never has to wonder about what we're thinking, should I say. He already knows. He knows our thoughts. He knows our heart. So we can always be open before him. And, all, and we should in this building relationship. Lay it all out before God. He knows. Not only does he know, he cares. And not only does he cares, he's able to do something about it. Pray first. In Philippians 4, Verses 6 and 7, and I don't have this in my notes, but it will be in the afternoon sermon notes. It says this, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard our hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus and this is a great encouragement for us because what it's saying is it doesn't matter what we go through, we can still bear fruit. We can still have peace regardless of what we're going through. And I really feel like I should say this too, is that when we're going through something, go to God first. Go to God first, church. 
there's a time that we come together as a body of Christ and we lift up our concerns, especially if we've been struggling with something or we're having a hard time breaking through something, go to, go to a, a brother or sister in Christ and pray through that. But when we initially have something happen in our life, go to God first. God wants to hear from us. He's saying, here I am. And James put it this way in James 5, verse 13, it says, is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. If we're suffering, if we're going through something, talk to God. Tell him. He cares. And if, if you're struggling, if you continue to have the concerns, go to another person. Come together in agreement that you can break through that. The next thing is to read our Bibles. And in order to know God, we're going to have to read our Bibles. It's, it's really just that simple. This is not new revelation. In fact, the very virtues that we were talking about that we need to add to our faith, they're in the Bible. If, if we do not read the Bible, we won't know how to please God. We won't know how to live for God. It's really just that simple. And 1 Peter 2, verse 2, it says, Like new, newborn babies, long for the milk of the word, so that by it you may grow in respect to your salvation. So Peter, again, is saying, add to your, add to your faith. Add to it. Because we do stand on God's promises. That's what the song that we, the last song that we sang was, we stand on God's promises and God will always honor his word. And if we're going to bear fruit and produce good works, we're going to have to spend time in the word of God. The third one is worship. Worship will help us to stay focused on God. I got some help for us today. Turn to 88.7. That's a local Christian radio station here. If you're listening from a, a different location, turn to your local radio station, turn on a, a, a gospel station or a Christian station, something that's gonna build you up in your, in your faith. Turn off the radio, off the news or whatever, it's only going to depress you. And don't worry about it. If, if, if you feel like you're going to miss something, don't worry. They're going to repeat it. You can catch up later. Allow yourself to be built up in your faith. Worship reminds us of how great our God is. God is bigger than anything that we're going to go through. He is. And we have been going through some difficult times. Just in our church, we had two ladies that lost their husbands. We have several families that are struggling with uh, the virus, their sicknesses. But when we worship, those things, somehow, they do grow strangely dim. In comparison to who God is, we can still be going through it, but we can still have a peace because of, of our God and because of who he is. Ephesians 5, 16, is, it says this, 16 down to 20, it says, Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the, Lord's, what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, among yourselves and making music to the Lord in your hearts and give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Worship will help us put our minds on the things above. It really, really will. If you're having a, a rough day, put some worship music on. And watch it change your life perspective. It will. It will help. And the fourth thing here I have 
is fellowship. Now, fellowship with other believers will encourage us to live for God. We find this in Hebrews 10. And again, um, I, I, didn't count, I didn't put all these verses in. They will be in after the sermon notes. It was just a lot. I didn't want to overwhelm the slides here. But in Hebrews 10, verses 24 through 25, it says, Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And that's what it says. Sometimes we, we jump right to verse 25. It says, We're, And let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. So we, we jump to the part where we shouldn't forsake the, for the assembling of ourselves, but we, we overlook the, the first part. The first, verse 24 says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. The reason why we get together in fellowship like that is, is so we can encourage each other to do good things. It's important. As believers, we are the body of Christ and we do need each other. We do. You guys are my family. You are. Every part of the body is important. We encourage each other to walk in our faith. That's the beauty of the body of Christ. In fact, in Ecclesiastes 4, it talks about if, if, if one person falls, if he doesn't have somebody there, how can he get up? There's unity within fellowship that's very, very important. So I'm going to shift and start, I'm not closing yet, but I'm going that direction. But as I begin to, to shift, church, the mission that God has for us is never changed. And it's, it's never going to change until Jesus comes back. We are to make disciples. And that really simply means to make followers of Christ, just like we're following Christ. And that's God's desire that none should perish. God's desire is that none should perish, but all should come to repentance. That's the heart of God. When you think about it, the, the Bible is, is, is really just one big long love story with all kind of twists and turns. Jesus shares a, uh, a parable of a shepherd that leaves 99 and goes after the one. He's cared, he cares about the one that's lost. He, he cares about everybody. He cares about our, our neighbors, our coworkers, our families, our friends. He cares about them. And for us, as believers, we enjoy this, this wonderful experience of having a close relationship with God. We, we can pray, we can spend time, we can feel his presence. Lord, thank you for that. And then we have this peace, knowing that our sins are forgiven. We, we, don't have, we don't carry that burden. But the beautiful thing about it is we have an opportunity to help others have that same experience. We do. When we spend time with God, people know it because we bear fruit. They see it. Sometimes we don't even recognize it, but we're always being watched. People are always watching us. We're always being watched. And for us as Christians, that's a good thing. We're not perfect, but we're perfectible. And what I mean by that is when God shows us something, we're willing to allow him to change us. And if people see that God can change us and he can do something in our life, that gives them hope. If God can use me, then he can use anybody. There's hope. There's hope for, there's hope for you. There's hope for us all. That's why Christ came. 
for us to bear fruit. In Matthew 5, this goes along with it because our mission is it never changed and never will change. Jesus puts it this way. It says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a stand and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. What I love about God's word is, is just is so consistent. It is. God tells us to be the light of the world. He tells us to, to go and bear fruit. He tells us to go and make disciples. That's not a coincidence. That's because Christ is working inside of us as his, as his body. And he's working through us. And when we add to our faith, we produce the fruit God has called us to produce. And when you think about it more, it's us simply keeping in step with God, keeping in step with the Spirit. And that's what Galatians 5 is about. If you have a chance, as we go back and look at that, it talks about how the, the spirit and the flesh, they wage against each other. But then it says the fruit of the spirit is this. So God wants us to keep in step with him as his, his body. In Acts 2, there's a good example of that that we see. We see... It's the early church coming together, fellowshipping, and, and we find this passage in Acts 2, verses 42 down through 47. It says, and they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and, and the prayers and all came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And they were selling their possessions and belongings and, belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as any had need. And day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread, in their homes, they received their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who are being saved. So in this, this passage here, we see the church praying, sp spending time in prayer, we see the church spending time in the word. Or they, in the text, they said spending time in the apostles' teachings. The apostles had been with Christ. We see the church fellowshipping. And we see the church worshiping and praising God. And because they were doing that, because they were adding to their qualities, because they were keeping in step with the Spirit, the Lord added to the church day by day those who were being saved. Day by day, God was making a difference in the lives of the people. The qualities we're adding to our faith, virtue, knowledge, self-control, steadfastness, godliness, brotherly affection, and love will not only keep us from falling, but they will also make us effective for God's use. It will. And in order to do that, in order for us to bear those fruit, if we stay focused and if we practice these qualities, if, if we practice praying, 
or talking to God. If we practice reading our, our, our Bibles, finding out who God is and, and what he desires, what he's done for us. John 1 says, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. We can't separate God from his word. If we, if we spend time worshiping, if we spend time putting our minds on the things above and allowing God to remind us of who he is, if we spend time fellowshipping and encouraging each other to do good works, we will produce the fruit that God expects from the body of Christ. He expects from us. If we do that, we will have the same experience in that divine nature, that actually spending time with God. When we apply these practices, when we actually do them, we'll see the benefits. We'll see it. Again, I know you know this church. This is a reminder. This is a reminder for us that those benefits of that divine nature, spending time with God, that closeness with God, is ultimately leading to this agape kind of love that God has for us and that God wants us to have for others. A kind of love that seeks out the good for others. And church, I, I know we know this. But this, this is a reminder for us today. Let's pray. Father, we, we thank you for this reminder. We thank you, Father, for your word. We thank you, Father, for, for all you have done for us, Lord. And Lord, you're so good. You're so good to put these reminders in place using Peter to make sure we have these reminders to add to our faith. And Lord, we're so encouraged of the benefits. We're so encouraged, Lord, that we can participate in your divine nature, Lord, the very essence of who God is, who he is, Lord. We, we have that opportunity. And Lord, we also have that, that promise that you can keep us from falling by participating, Lord, by practicing these virtues. But also, Lord, we have the promise that it will keep us from being ineffective and unfruitful. And Lord, if there's anybody listening today, Lord, that this may be new to them, I pray, Father, that they would know that you have a love for them, an agape love, a love that's seeking them, a love that cares for them dearly. And Lord, even if they were the only one on this earth, Lord, you would still come back just for them because that's who you are. I pray that would be an encouragement to them, Lord, to reach out to you and ask for you to come into their hearts, change their life, make them a new creation, Lord. That's your desire because you are life. And outside of you, Lord, there is no life. Thank you that your promises are true, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you take us from glory to glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.